नमस्ते एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ग्रेट माइंड्स ग्रेट कोट्स स्टार्टिंग विद निसर्ग दत्त महाराज द टॉपिक इज आइडियाज अबैंडन फॉल्स आइडियाज अबैंडन फॉल्स आइडियाज दैट्स ऑल there is no need of true ideas there aren't any this has some hidden meaning it's not very obvious from the quotation abandon false ideas that is all there is no need of true ideas there aren't any so this in two parts first abandon false ideas that is all for example lot of people have this idea and even it is written about and it is stated as fact or as truth and that is that humans are violent by nature now if you see lot of people around you who are violent by nature you reach a conclusion that humans are violent by nature or if there are conflicts wars taking place all the time at any given time then you get this idea that maybe war conflict fight battle is part of human nature that's what humans do but that may be false idea because in reality you'll find that you yourself and everyone else talks about peace thinking about peace and what wanting to live in peace so there is a dichotomy that on one hand we all want peace on the other hand there is always conflict so to call conflict as part of human nature may be a false idea so drop that idea what is left that is we want peace that is not an idea because that is a fact and one can take up many other examples so this is the first part abandon false ideas that is all there is no need of true ideas there aren't any because a true idea you cannot look for an idea which is true because it is true it does not need an idea so a lot of people i hear speak about protecting nature or compassion kindness love if it is an idea which means somebody or you yourself can prove it wrong at some stage that no this is not true but if it is true for example that we are part of nature our destiny resides in nature and if nature is destroyed then means we are destroyed if we are contributing to destruction of nature which means we are contributing to our own destruction if this is true this is not an idea this is a fact so he is saying in a roundabout way abandon false ideas that is all there is no need of true ideas there aren't any Here is one by Swami Vivekanand Every idea has to become broad till it covers the whole world So the concept here is a broader idea that is not limited to a specific situation to a specific period of time or location or a group of people 
if your idea covers only that in a limited sense, then it is not worth much. You need to broaden it. Find generalization can be made on a limited number of ideas. So every idea has to become broad till it covers the whole humanity. So if you have, for example, concept of doing something good or wonderful, but it only benefits you or your near and dear ones and a few people, but leaves others alone or even others worse off, so you are doing good at the expense of doing something not so good for others, that is a very limited idea containing selfishness. So if you broaden it for the welfare of humanity, even if you are not able to accomplish it, the idea covers it and what you can focus on is something you can man manage, you can handle or within your reach. So you do that, but it is not limited to your achievement. Your achievement is part of your vision for a greater good. Another one by Swami Vivekanand. Fill yourself with an idea and you are sure to succeed. Now what does it mean to fill yourself with an idea? In other words, you analyze it, you imagine it, visualize it, the impact and what it takes to fulfill an idea. So fill yourself in a, with an idea and you are sure to succeed. Why you are sure to succeed and what is filling yourself with an idea? In other words, your idea is with a clear mind, with due consideration to all aspects of it and do not entertain conflicting arguments that yes, this idea is wonderful, but however, it cannot be done. So if that is an idea you have, that is impossible to do, or you are imagining it to be impossible, then it will not carry you forward. So fill yourself. In other words, avoid doubts in your mind. Be convinced. You have a conviction, determination. Fill yourself with that. Then all you will be strategizing, planning, trying to gather resources to accomplish will be your center of focus. You will be focusing on how to accomplish it. If you have doubts or if you have conflicting ideas, then you will not be able to focus on accomplishing it. You will at some point abandon it. That okay, it's too difficult, I cannot do it, forget it. So try to avoid being in that situation. Fill yourself with an idea and you are sure to succeed. Penny Pierce is saying, if an idea comes into my imagination, there is a way I can manifest it. In other words, it is not only a fleeting idea. It captures your imagination. You are contemplating on it. You are planning it, strategizing for it. So if an idea comes into my imagination, it draws my attention, then there is a way I can manifest it. Now manifestation is in many ways. It's not only that you practically accomplish every detail of the idea, but you are moving in that direction. You are talking about it. You are writing about it. You are engaging other people in it. These are manifestations of expression. You can express it, manifest it. So, if an idea comes into my imagination, there is a way I can express it or manifest it. Here is one by Emile Chartier. Nothing is more dangerous than an idea when it is the only one you have. So he is opening up 
the scope of new ideas, not being limited to one. This is another point of view, of course, than a single idea to which you are totally committed. He is thinking of nothing more dangerous than an idea when it is the only one you have. Why he is concerned about the only one, only one idea, is that you may not have considered or thought about another idea which may be superior or which may be something you can try and accomplish or manifest. So this is kind of giving you choices that you have a goal, a vision, but many ways you can accomplish that goal. And if there is only one way you can accomplish the goal and there are limitations to that way, then you might find another way. So this leaving the options open, having many ideas from which you can choose that this is what is most important for me and this is what I, I can actually try to accomplish. And the last one is by Stephen Wolinsky. The idea is not the thing it is referring to. First of all, idea is not an object. It is not a material. It is a thought wave. It is something subtle, invisible, but you can experience it. You can visualize it in your mind. You can imagine it. This is an idea. You cannot say where the idea is or you cannot touch and see and feel it. So, the idea is about something. So, idea itself is not that thing. For example, you are looking at a map, you are thinking of a map and you wish there were fewer countries or many countries who are fighting today can unite and become one. That is an idea. So that idea is not the places on map which are being changed. If a map is to be changed, the location of countries or names of countries, if it has to be changed, a new configuration can emerge and you have this idea. So this idea is not the revised configuration of nations. I mean, I, this is a broad idea I'm just giving you. Or you have an idea that moon is actually a savior for us. It protects us from violent climate. It protects us from irregular monthly cycle or it protects us from storms in the ocean. Whatever you can think of. Or it protects us from an irregular rotation of the earth which is also true. So you cannot, you can imagine these ideas, but the idea is not actually what you are referring to. The simplest example is, I am pointing at the moon, but my finger pointing there, this is not the moon. Moon is what it is referring to. So in a simple way, the idea is not the thing it is referring to. Thank you for listening and we'll meet again with more wonderful quotes from great men and women throughout history. Thank you.